वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ ग्लोबल हेल्थ कंसर्न आई एम योर होस्ट शुमन भट्टाचार्य जी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ शमुस बायोलॉजी इन दिस सेट ऑफ वीडियोस विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अनदर हेल्थ इशू दैट इज एंजिना पेक्टोरिस नो एंजिना इज अनदर वेरी कॉमन टाइप ऑफ हेल्थ इशू दो दो इट्स नॉट इट्स नॉट दैट मच डिवास्टेटिंग काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम बट स्टिल एंजिना इज समथिंग Uh, you should know about because it is more common it can happen to you uh, any time i mean during your any any kind of age any kind of uh, days or times of your uh, of your lifetime morely it's predominant in the older ages but uh, still it can happen if you are an athlete uh, if you are uh, what what whatever uh, profession you are in but still it can happen so so let's talk about angina pectoris uh, in this whole set of videos and in this first video we'll be talking about what is angina as like always we always talk about what is it first so so let's begin so angina is a uh, it's normally it's classically it is characterized uh, by the normally the substernal squeezing chest pain now so you can see here in this picture it's clearly depicted it's not, it's the disease of your chest that means it's a disease of your heart not only actually heart but actually the uh, those uh, vessels that are uh, pumping blood that that are supplying but blood to your heart those are called coronary arteries or coronary veins on or those or those vesicles so coronary vesicles so the problem with coronary vesicle any kind of problem of uh, transfer of blood uh, into your heart can create problem due to lack of oxygen or or some problems it can create immense chest pain uh, which uh, occurs and begins at the heart and slightly radiating through your left arm because you know heart is in uh, position in the left side of your body so there will be the left hand arm which is affecting the first right and it can occur with stress and relieved with a uh, normally rest or uh, nitroglycerin so simply you can take some drugs very basic drugs which will uh, take away the pain which can clear the situation but generally angina or angina type symptoms may occur many a times of your life but actually it can be life threatening in certain conditions when people have atherosclerosis or they are having any kind of arterial damage or arterial clotting that can result in stroke and many more things now in this case that can result in heart attack most importantly because the blood is supplying to the heart right so these are also associated with nausea vomiting uh, and so on right so uh, normally uh, angina can be classified into several part and among them these are the basic type but uh, major causes of angina is the uh, presence of any kind of blood clot which is at the terminal part but presence of any kind of plaque in your body in the in the uh, endothelium of your blood uh, vessel or sometimes uh, finally that plaque is turned into the blood clot uh, in, uh, at the end so these are uh, that that's in a sense in is angina now let's talk about uh, the pathogenesis and etiology of angina so if you look at the pathogenesis it is uh, you know uh, you are having so that whatever we i've told you before that the general cause of angina is simply due to the presence of plaque in your uh, blood vessel wall which is narrowing the area for your uh, blood movement inside your blood vessel and also uh, finally the plaque uh, can be ruptured and the blood clotting start to form that can be more devastating and it will turn into what is called uh, the chronic type of angina usually it can be unstable and then the stable one which is the chronic one now actually here the symptoms are results of usually myocardial ischemia which is due to insufficient blood flow through your uh, art arteries uh, which are presented towards your heart right or uh, or which are changed in coronary vessels right so any problem with those coronary vessels can lead to this type of problems in any type of clotting or plaques present in those coronary artery can give you the problem so you can see it is the healthy coronary artery and coronary artery means coronary always deals with the heart of your body so these arteries are present and they are supplying blood to your heart itself that's called the coronary uh, system or the coronary blood uh, circulation system now coronary circulation system is the circulation of blood through the heart itself so heart is supplying the blood through itself because heart is also consisting of cells and tissues that they need to have constant supply of oxygen to survive so that's why that's its own system of delivery delivering oxygen and other things but if there is any problem regarding that heart functioning will be uh, 
will be problematic heart will pump very faster to 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 pump more blood so that it can uh, get more oxygen due to the problem with this uh, jam in the road simply so so that's kind of uh, about the pathogenesis now it can be caused uh, by three different scenarios as i've told you before it can be any type of plaque formation which is not that much hard plaque formation usually can be present there uh, with the development of age then sometimes it can be narrowing of artery due to plaque formation or something like that which is getting worse by worse day by day and finally it can turn into the blood clot due to this artery and narrowing now uh, everything is fine until and unless a blood can pass through now after a certain time when the red blood cells are unable to pass through your coronary artery that makes this more more and more difficult for you to actually survive because in these conditions uh, as uh, the blood cannot flow uh, the pressure starts to build up and that artery finally ruptures and it can cause a stroke it can cause your heart to fail so these things are related in these situ situations now here uh, we depicted the scenarios of how the blood clot actually forms as i've told you blood clot formed at the terminal and, and the final stages because at the beginning only plaques start to form but the plaque are simply nothing but fibrous caps start to form there now what happens here once uh, fibrous caps start 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 to build there and finally once it is building and making the artery narrow and narrower then finally uh, rupturation of this cap will lead to the lead to the production or release of red blood cells onto this place and those red blood cells start to uh, start to clog uh, the artery start to arrange the artery in so that it will block the artery so blood flow is not possible blood will flow back and it will create the pressure immense pressure in your coronary artery and finally it will lead to the rupturation of coronary artery so this is the dangerous scenario when once the blood start to clot now the mechanism of onset of uh, this uh, disease actually due to many different aspects if we begin here with uh, the increment of the heart so increasing heart rate for any kind of emotional aspects or any kind of physical activities sometimes uh, after load or preload uh, any kind of scenarios like that it can increase your oxygen consumption of your body because if you uh, if you have some preload or afterload works that is tedious for you your cells are working so hard to keep your metabolism going so they require more and more oxygen to keep your metabolism going so as the oxygen consumption requirement increases uh, it creates uh, the chest pain because the heart needs to pump very often more often than it usually usually do so that's why uh, it creates a pain in your heart and another reason for that is uh, any kind of uh, stenosis or thrombosis that's that's the medical situation the clinical situations of your heart of your vessels any kind of formation of thrombus in your uh, in your arteries any kind of plaques formation or any kind of blood clotting in your artery and for that those is your vasospasm can be a part of that so all this type of scenarios can lead to uh, decreasing uh, of the coronary blood flow as the coronary blood flow sl slowly decreases it also can create angia remember if the blood flow decreases or oxygen consumption increases both the way it cause chest pain or angia now the actual scenario in all these cases the thing to to actually uh, remember in these cases is that uh, the problem with angia always occurs if 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 our heart cannot uh, cope up with the demand of the oxygen supply of your body so it's always supply versus demand situation so in this condition always there there are problems whatever supply versus demand is there if we look at the progression of the disease we can see that at the very beginning if this is the normal coronary artery everything is fine not, no plaques and forms now start slowly uh, small fatty streaks start to form deposition of fat deposition of cholesterol or bad fat like those start to form which finally creates plaque now during this condition up to the formation of plaques or plaques whatever uh, that isn't that much bad now finally once uh, the plaque is slowly increasing and it, it starts to arrange and form with many more type of cells like uh, like other cells like like uh, along with red blood cells white blood cells and platelets start to arrange start to adhere to the inner membrane of uh, the blood vessel and finally the plaque and the amount of plaque and the, and the density of plaque start to rise and after all once the density reaches a particular value uh, when it's called the obstructive value of the plaque in that condition 
Finally, if we test it, we can find uh, the test to be abnormal. Normally, there are tests available to get the idea whether the disease is setting or not, like non-invasive tests. Now, during the plague, uh, the length and density of the plague is low or less. In those conditions, uh, it becomes non-invasive. Uh, th those non-invasive test results found to be normal. But once the test uh, and the plague density start to rise, the test uh, is showing us some abnormal effects. Now, as they start to build up more and more, Finally, those plaques were ruptures and red blood cells spill out. Once the red blood cells spill out, those red blood cells start to coagulate and they start to jam and clog your artery. So you can see how much diameter of your artery previously is. Now, uh, due to all these problems, finally the arterial diameter gets very, very slow. Uh, very, very not slow, actually very, very uh, small. So these are the situations. Now there can be many different types, like unstable angina. In unstable angina, what? Uh, sorry, angina. In unstable angina, what happens that uh, that blood flow is blocked by any kind of thrombus or movement of uh, clog, clog or clot or or some plaque that can be removed easily. But acute uh, kind of situation or chronic angina is also possible. That's called acute myocardial infraction. So in that that kind of situation. Uh, this clot start to be very very prominent and permanent in this in, in, in those places of coronary artery and that creates more and more uh, problematic situations for the people who are having engine in those situations.